Oh, alrighty. Well, morning, everybody. Well, I was um, well, I was uh, browsing YouTube, and this this video here came up in uh, one of my uh, YouTube recommendations. And um, as one who's been battling a, or battle, I wouldn't even say battling, but a uh, one who's been stuck with a junk food addiction for as far back as I can remember, um, I I just started watching this, and I actually found myself uh, doing. Doing uh, writing commentary on this, so I figured if I'm if I'm doing that, I might as well at least make a make a video about it, you know, make a video documenting it. So um, I didn't I didn't really uh, I didn't really get a chance to uh, to set this up beforehand, to you know to where my where, where my webcam's in the right spot and whatnot. So I might need to make adjust I might need to stop and make adjustments as I go. So, but but anyway, um, the name of the vid. Uh, dietitian, nutritionist, debunk 19 diet myths. Um, as and again, as one who's been saddled with a junk food addiction for for many years, for lack of a better phrase, um, this is something that I could probably. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm none of them. But I mean, like I said, I've had a. I've had a battle. I've had a battle with this for for a very long time. So um, and I've tried, and I've tried losing weight. Uh, I won. I got my weight down from 210 to as low as 140. I probably told this story before in other places. I guess I'll go ahead and say it here. But again, um, right around, right around, um, uh, I think it was probably, um, because I have a because of uh, CRS issues. I'm just gonna go ahead and say three years. Uh, three years ago, I weighed around 210, and I was just. I just kind of tired, just kind of tired of it. There's more, there's more to it, but I'll just, the short answer, I was just tired of being, I was tired of weighing 210, so I just went on a, I embarked on a weight loss campaign. Um, I'd probably say it was probably a two-year campaign, uh, which eventually I managed to get my weight down to 140, but when I got it down to 140, uh, during my vacation, I cracked like I just went on a week-long junk food binge. Uh, I know uh, at least three of those days I literally sat and ate a large pizza in one sitting. On at least three of those days that I can remember, everything else is all uh, donuts and cookies. Every day, donuts and cookies. Like I guess make it up for lost time. But anyway, I don't want to digress too far into it. Um, try to get back to the subject at hand here. Uh, again, I was. I was I started watching this and I figured since I'm already doing commentary on all these, I might as well go ahead and make a video about it. So, but anyway, here goes. Red wine is good for your heart. Um, I've heard the story. I, I'm, I've been a teetotaler for many years. I had red wine maybe one time in my entire life when I was a little kid, but it was just like a little, it was just a little tiny glass. I wasn't. Chucking a whole bottle or anything like that. So, um, I've heard this though. Red wine's good for your heart. <sighs> I mean, if it. I mean, they're probably more of an authority on it than I am. But yeah, I have heard it before. Your opinion, mileage, your mileage may vary. Okay, actually, this is the biggest myth of all time. <laughs> Meat is a necessary part of a balance. Um. Nope. Nope. Um. Veganism, vegetarianism, um, no, not not the paleo diet. There's meat in the paleo diet, but I mean, I mean vegans, vegetarians, they're still going strong to this day. I mean, I, I mean, I've heard of a, I mean, I've heard of vegetarians, you know, enjoying the vegetarian diet ever since I was a little kid, like back in the 70s. So, and they don't eat meat, so no, you you, this is definitely a myth right here. You know, for a brief period of time, I didn't go without. I mean, I didn't eat meat either. So, but uh, granted, some probably somewhere during my weight loss campaign, I I probably abstained from meat. But I don't. It it didn't last forever. I had to get back into the. I had to get back into the chicken and had a chicken and chicken and salmon and whatnot. So, but anyway, there. Diet. Definitely a myth. This is a controversial one, and I love this topic. Fruit is as unhealthy as candy. Um, I'm, I'm, nope. 
Fruits, uh, fruits better. <laughs> fruits, fruit is way healthier than candy. Um, if I'm, if I'm correct about this, fruit, fruit is a simple sugar. I mean, it's probably not, it's not terrible for you, but it's probably isn't ideal either. But your body, um, because it's a simple sugar, your body's got to have an easier time processing it than it would, uh, candy. Whereas, um, candy's got about an umpty zillion different ingredients in there. Your body has to go through and, you know, has to go through and process all of that, so it's going to have a harder time with it. But I'm, I wonder if they're going to be saying that later on, but I think, um, uh, Carbs from grains and whatnot, like oatmeal and bread, both two things that I do that I love eating. Um, they're they're kind of in the middle. They're kind of in the middle as well. They're not they're not bad for you, but there is better stuff out there. <laughs> if it's orange soda and Snickers or an apple, eat the apple. Hi, I'm Tamar Samuels, a registered dietitian and the co-founder of. Lena Hi, I'm, I'm Joe. Vanessa Rosetto, and I'm a registered dietitian. And Hi, I'm Joe Schmoll, and I'm not. Just to get that out there. Co-founder of Kalina Health, and today we are debunking 19 diet myths. Myth number one: beans are toxic. Oh, and to let you know, I had, and I probably should have said this at the start of the stream, but this, at least the early part of this video, is going to be somewhat rehearsed. I've seen this once before, but like I said. But like I said at the start of the stream, when it gets to where I'm actually doing commentary on this, I figured I might as well make a video about it. So, but um, I, I've heard story, I've heard stories that uh, red kidney beans, if you don't, if you don't pre-cook them or if you don't wash them thoroughly or something like that, they can be toxic. But otherwise, yeah, no. I mean, I used to have a kidney beans were actually part of my diet for a while. Uh, lima beans as well, they were part of my diet too. Um, at some point, I just didn't, I just didn't care to eat them anymore. So, but no, they're not toxic. No, beans are not toxic. They have fiber. They have protein. They come from the earth. I mean, tomorrow. I think this is just. Oh. We put. I'm sorry. We put on pause again. Just, just let everybody know in case anyone's curious. I'm having me a V8 energy drink, orange pineapple flavored. Okay, back to the vid. Another way to, like, vilify... Pa let me pause it. <sighs> let me rewind back a little bit. I forgot to do a sound check on this, so... This video might be a super-duper loud. Let me... ...are debunking 19 diet myths. Myth number one. Beans are toxic. No, beans are not toxic. They have fiber. They have protein. They come from the earth. I mean. Okay, so let me uh, let me double check this again. I'm sorry about this, but but like I said, this is this is something that I just jumped right on into on a whim. So let me rewind back a bit. Doing a sound check or doing a sound check. Beans are toxic. No, beans are not toxic. They have fiber. They have protein. They come from the earth. I mean, tomorrow. I think this is just another way to, like, vilify carbs. I think maybe people mistake a little bit of GI discomfort with toxicity. Beans, as Vanessa said, are really high in fiber, which is a good thing. But a lot of people don't eat enough fiber. And when you first reintroduce fiber, it can cause... A oh, and I this is some. This is another reason why I wanted to, why I wanted to do commentary on this video. This girl here... She looks almost exactly like the girl that um that gave me my COVID nineteen my COVID nineteen shot yesterday. It was like a spitting image of her. I mean, it, 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 I mean she was wearing a mask, so I it, I just figured, hey, close enough. Damn, just like a striking image. So a little bit of indigestion, some bloating, maybe some gas, but that you'll need some beetle. It's a bad thing. It means that you Been should there. probably just start slower. Been there. I've let out some stinky farts. I've, I've let out some stinky farts back when I was eating beans, and even I'm like, oh my god. Or, or if you feel, or if you feel one, or I feel one coming on, and oh god, you know, people start, people start coming around me, I'm like, no, get away, 
Get away! Oh god. Ma'am, you're not gonna like this. Oh. You know, so that that kind of thing. With a smaller portion and build your way up to, you know, a full cup of beans. Okay, myth number two. Bananas pack the most They probably know more about this than I do. Found in pretty much every fruit and vegetable. Also, kiwis have the most potassium and that uh, banana. I have a banana a day just because I like to eat a banana a day. I'm pretty sure, uh, I mean, bananas aren't the only, I think they're saying it too, bananas aren't the only place in the world that has potassium. I mean, there's potassium in lots of other foods as well, so. This thing is just like a marketing scheme from the 80s, so they had like the Chiquita banana. Yep, first. Was, like, get all of your potassium from bananas. Delicious Chiquita bananas are rich in potassium. Myth number three, honey and agave syrup are better than sugar. Um, if they're talking, if they're talking like the pure cane sugar, like the kind you can get in the uh, baking aisle at a grocery store, they're probably about the same. I mean, I, I work, I mean, I work at a grocery store. I mean, I've been, I've been working in grocery stores for probably about 30 years. And, um, I'm pretty sure that they're all the same. As far as, like, overall effectiveness, the only difference is, is, you're probably, you're probably going to have to, this is, honey's probably going to be a little more expensive than sugar. I mean, they don't sell four pound, you know, four pound jugs of honey. No, they sell them in, like, little, little bottles. Um, agave syrup, you're pretty much gonna have to donate your right nut in order to get something like this. This stuff here is expensive as hell, and they're in, they're in like even smaller bottles, like little, little, little um, little salad dressing bottles. So yeah, it, the only thing different, the only difference here is just the price. Actually, oh, there's I, no let me finish. Let me finish. Um, no, as far as like the pro, like the processed sugar. That goes into candy and whatnot, then yeah, honey and agave are way better than that stuff. Right? Sugar is sugar is sugar. Ultimately, the way that we process all of these simple sugars is exactly the same in the body. Although honey and depending on the type of agave, she's saying simple have a sugar. Slightly higher nutrient profile, so it might have a little bit more minerals than the sugar itself, which has absolutely no vitamins, minerals, or phytonutrients. Myth number four: fat-free foods are nope. Nope. Um, there's probably exceptions out there. Um, but yeah, I, this is probably the part here that, that, um, that prompted me to make a video out of this. But, um, if, um, if food and junk food companies are these, uh, are the money hungry, greedy bastards that everybody says they are, then, um, they're going, and I've been hearing this for, and I've been hearing this for years. If it's fat-free, they're probably putting something else in there to compensate. Because otherwise, it's the, it's the classic saying, fat-free, you know, fat-free, caffeine-free, sugar-free, all of that tastes like shit. So, I mean, so, so naturally, they started putting stuff like Splenda, Aspartame. They, they're always going to put, um, I think, uh, this stuff here, they're putting coconut oil, peanut oil, palm oil, that kind of thing. They're putting, they're basically putting some something in there to compensate it so the fat-free stuff doesn't taste so nasty. So, but basically what I'm getting at here is, uh, fat-free is almost as bad, if not worse, than, than just, you're better off, you're better off just buying the straight-up junk. You know, you're, you're just better off buying the straight-up fatty stuff. But, I mean, like I said, I think a lot of the, a lot of the fat-free foods was, probably put into existence because because of the bad stigma that all these food companies are you know are going through you know i'm guessing probably probably because of all the people protesting all the protests that have been going on against all the 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 bad food that hormel and the hormel and all those other companies that are putting out so they had a as a form of damage control they had to start coming out with a line of fat free foods you know, but I get, I mean, if, if they're the greedy, hungry, hungry bastards that everybody says they are, then they're going to make, they're not going to want to, they're not going to make this stuff at a loss. So they're going to try, they're going to try to make some kind of, they want to make some, they want to make money on fat-free foods too. So like I said, so like I've been saying, they're going to compensate, they're going to compensate in some way.
So, but yeah. Um, one book that I read, uh, Fast Diets for Dummies. It's a, it's basically fasting for dummies, um, which is what I did for a brief period of time. Um, they they refer to them as Frankenfoods. Um, they had, and I've seen this myself, paleo friendly. They had paleo friendly foods. They had, they had vegan burgers. I mean, everybody else has probably seen these too. You know, uh, vegan burgers. No, I don't think I've ever seen paleo burgers, but basically, they're called frankenfoods. You know, they're it, basically just you know cheap knockoff imitations. But but anyway, um, <laughs> let's continue. Healthy. First of all, everybody responds to different foods differently. Fat-free foods can be healthy, but a lot of the times they're not healthy. Nope. Oftentimes, when we take away the fat. We take away the ability of the food to make us feel full. And then we also add in things like sugar to make the food more yep. palatable, to make it taste better, which can actually end up making the food itself. They're not, not going to make fat free foods at a loss. Just eat the regular serving of they ain't losing money on it. You'll be better off. Myth number five fruit is as unhealthy. Okay, I've already, I've already said this once before. I think, uh, I think at the time. It was um it was during the intro okay so i'll let this go it's candy <laughs> fruit has antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and fiber which no one gets enough of so please eat the fruit like if it's orange soda and snickers or an apple eat the apple yes this myth is especially dangerous because i think people will equate fruit okay yeah with bad I told, yeah, this totally went right by me, too. I mean, fruit has lots of nutrients in them. Candy doesn't. So, but like I said, but like I said, that was, I, I think it was in that book, again, it was in that book I was reading, Fasting for Dummies. Um, I think they kind of said the same thing, too, that if you're eating fruit, you really want to watch the, uh, the glycemic index or something like that, because it can be a contributing factor in diabetes or something like that, but, uh, I mean, it's simple, it, it's simple sugar. It might be simple sugar, but it's still sugar. So, but like, like I said, but they're 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 totally right on this, and this is totally right by me. Then avoid it, and they're missing out on a whole set of nutrients, and then also tend to overeat candy. So they'll say something like, "My doctor said that I have to be careful with the fruit that I'm eating because it increases my blood sugar." This is what I was hearing too. Yep. Eat, you know, chocolate at night. <laughs> Myth number six. Breakfast. Nope. Um. Nope. Um. I. Now, on one end, I gotta. I probably preface this by saying that uh, I actually get mixed opinions on this. But they're kind of by the on the same token. It's also been said that you don't want to eat just before you lay down, especially eating a lot. Because I guess you're, um, according to them, if you lay, when you're during sleep, your, like, digestion system shuts down or whatever. But I think, I guess that, some say that's a myth. And then there's, um, others that say, no matter, and I kind of agree with this as well, because it's been my experience too. It, when you consume those calories, doesn't matter. All that matters is, how many calories you consume at the end of the day. That's all that matters. So, this is a myth right here. I mean, and, and again, once again in the book I read, uh, Fasting for Dummies, it is a legit diet. It's called the one meal a day diet. In fact, um, one of my viewers, um, I'm also a Twitch streamer, but one of my viewers said that um, he used to do the same thing. He did the one meal a day diet. I, I think it's also called the warrior's diet. Where um, you only have one meal a day, nothing else the rest of the day. So, I mean, there's these there's these goofy different diets that are out there. All of, and for, excuse me. There, let me rephrase that. There's these different eating patterns. All these different eating patterns that are out there, and all of them seem to be legit. And again, it doesn't matter when you consume those calories. All that matters is how many. How many at the end of the day? So, 
is the most important meal of the day. I think this myth can be harmful because for people who have all or nothing thinking, they believe that if they don't get breakfast right or have a healthy, well-balanced breakfast, then the rest of the day is sort of ruined. And they use that as an excuse for them to not make healthy choices for the rest of the day. The reality is that every time we eat is an opportunity for us to take care of ourselves and eat a nutritious meal. If you do not eat, if you spend long periods of time not eating, then your metabolism doesn't know to do its job. Even having like a small piece of fruit and like nut butter or nuts in the morning is just like enough to fuel your metabolism and get yourself going and likely making sure that you're not gonna overeat at later meals. Myth number seven, you must drink eight glasses. Um, yeah, I've heard this one too. Um, with me though, most of my water, I drink um right when I wake up. I drink a, a whole glass of water. I mean, I, I chugged out one, I basically power drink that entire glass of water. But that's pretty much most, most of my water for the day. I'll have like an occasional glass here or there, but otherwise... Is that my speaker hissing? Let me unplug it real quick. Kill that hiss. But otherwise, it's like drinking stuff like this. So, but as far as water in and of itself, I basically just have one glass, and that and that's it. But as far as um drinking eight, like exactly eight, like I don't know, but um I think as long as you're drinking some, as long as you're it. Oh, that's what that's what it was. It doesn't have to be water in and of itself. I mean, I want it. It should be water. Here, I'll let me. I'll. It's all jumbled up here in my head. Hold on. You know, there's like these quick and dirty calculations that dietitians use to determine how much water someone should drink. And so it's usually your weight in kilograms. Take that number and you would times it by somewhere around. Protein works the same way. To 30. It puts you somewhere in like a two liter range a day, which I know can be scary for some people. They're like, I have to go to the bathroom all the time. But spoiler, we're in COVID. So. That's another thing too. Uh, one of the reasons why most of my water is just drunk one time a day. I work at a, I work at a job where the nearest bathroom is a, it's, it's a pretty long hike from one side of the store clear down, like say about I'd probably I'd probably say okay I'm I'm, I'm calculating up here. Nobody. I'm gonna say um, it could be as long as a 50-yard walk from one side of the store all the way to the bathroom. I mean that, and I can't. And I work at a job where, you know, it's fast-paced, high stress. I don't really have time to make the walk all the way, all the way one side of the store, all the way over to the bathroom, just to go pee and then turn around and walk all the way back. So, I mean, if I was really drinking, if I, if I really did drink the eight glasses of water I probably want I probably would be getting um getting written up more often for a productivity issue because I'm always going to the bathroom so yeah it's just one glass of water a day so drink the water and then you could train your bladder and you'll be right at your bathroom so it's totally fine but that helps you with your skin it helps you with your hair it helps you with your nails it helps you with fullness it helps you with digestion it helps regulate your bowel movement. So water is obviously something we need to be doing and we need to be doing more of because people really don't drink enough water. You can get water from other places. So you can get water. Fruit. I didn't even need to stop that. From teas, specifically herbal teas. You can get water from coffee, but coffee is also a diuretic. So you're going to sort of eliminate some of that water a little bit more. But yep, you, you can get water from fruit from too. Great doesn't have that diuretic effect you can get water from soups and then most fruits and vegetables have a really high water content myth number eight you can't eat cheese if you're lactose um i know my store carries it i don't know if it i'd probably defer to these guys but um because what we do sell lactose or lactose free cheese at our store but again it I, I don't know if you'd classify that as a Franken food. 
like you know, like like I was saying earlier about some of the other foods that I mentioned, you're probably just better off going straight to the going straight to the fatty stuff than to take your chances with the fat free stuff. I don't know if uh, this kind of cheese would be would fall into that category. So. This is a pretty dangerous myth because skipping out on any food group can be harmful for missing certain nutrients, especially dairy products. Not all dairy products contain high amounts of lactose. So people who are lactose intolerant actually tend to do well with cheese, especially hard cheeses. The soft cheeses tend to have a little bit more lactose in them. Yeah, like Parmesan cheese, for example, has no lactose in it. Also, if you're lactose intolerant, you could train yourself to tolerate 250 milliliters. That's about eight ounces of lactose. You know, the bottom line is you can eat some cheese even if you're lactose intolerant. Myth number nine, red wine is good for your heart. Okay, actually, I've already, I've already talked this, this one. is the biggest myth of all time. <laughs> I understand where it must come from, right? You know, it's made with grapes, grapes have antioxidants, and you know, they have flavonoids, those tend to help with the heart. So like, that's fine. And you know, one glass- But I'm pretty sure that in the process of making the wine, a lot of the good stuff, that, or a lot of the good nutrients in the grapes are being cooked out, so. Here. Glass of red wine isn't going to hurt you, but out of like a 250,000 participant study about the effects of alcohol on the body, there are no real benefits to alcohol. Alcohol, the body sees as a poison. No surprises so there. Do a lot of work and sacrifice a lot of metabolic processes in order to metabolize alcohol. If you're looking to support your heart, instead of picking up the closest bottle of wine, think about ways you can incorporate more fiber, more heart healthy fats, and of course, increasing your physical activity. Yeah, you can't increase your physical activity if you're hungover from the night before. <laughs> and dehydrated, yeah. Myth number 10, fresh produce. Uh, nope. Um, it, it kind of go, it kind of goes back to, it kind of goes back to what I was saying some time ago about the uh, kidney beans. If they don't, if they don't, if they're not thoroughly washed and or uh, pre-cooked, they're actually toxic. This is kind of this. This is kind of the same, kind of along the same lines here. I mean, I mean, again, I mean, I mean, I've worked in grocery stores for thirty years. I mean, if you're, I mean, I've, they, I've seen them throw away tons of produce that's gone bad. Just whole banana boxes full of them and stuff. This stuff that's rotten or, or something else really nasty is bad about them. So. So yeah, but I mean, um, as far as uh, at face value here, nope, you can um. I mean, I don't know. I mean, frozen sometimes frozen's actually better. I mean, it. How can I how can I explain it? I mean, if you look at the if you look at the back of a back of a bag of say broccoli, I mean, you're probably just gonna see ingredients. Broccoli. I mean, you're not going to see broccoli, FDNC, yellow number five, calcium carbonate, um, gibberish word, gibberish word, gibberish word, gibberish word, um, you know, gibberish, you know, gibberish, you know, and the rest all gibberish like you'd see on a candy bar. No, you're most likely just going to see one ingredient, broccoli. So, I mean, so in that, I, but um, I'll, I'll Always defer to them. better than frozen produce. Fresh produce is definitely awesome. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having fresh produce, but not everyone has access to fresh produce. And the cool thing about frozen produce is that it's often frozen at peak ripeness. So we can capture all of the vital vitamins and minerals and nutrients within the product without having to stack I wonder if they mentioned organic for being able to store these things in our freezer myth number 11 you need to drink milk nope. for strong bones strong bones come from uh, calcium vit calcium phosphorus vitamin D if you could find those three nutrients in something else other than milk that'll work um, again this is like 
the dairy council. I don't know. I'm like afraid they're like going to come and find me. Milk is not necessarily going to help with strong bones. You can get the same amount of calcium in a stalk of broccoli as a glass of milk. The reason why milk is so-called good for our bones is because, as Vanessa said, the calcium content. But milk is also fortified with vitamin D, which means that it doesn't naturally contain vitamin D. Most foods don't. So one of the best ways that you can get vitamin D is by getting out there and getting some sun. So actually, getting sun might be just as helpful for strong bones than... Yeah, so... But, um, I do, uh... I drink almond milk with... I... Maybe if I can remember to, I'll look at the nutritional label, but um, I would I would assume that vitamin D would be in there. But otherwise, I'm an indoorsy kind of person. I'm not a I'm not an out I'm not an outdoors kind of guy at all. So I'm gonna have to get my vitamin D elsewhere. Drinking a glass of milk, if not more helpful. Myth number twelve: Probiotics are good. I am. Somebody explained to me what probiotics was one time. I totally forgot what I totally forgot afterwards. Everybody has probiotics in their gut already. So when we talk about probiotics in a supplement form, some people who have compromised immunity or who have certain gut conditions like small intestine bacterial overgrowth actually tend to do pretty poorly on probiotics. For the vast majority of the population, probiotics are good for everyone. Yeah, I have no idea what probiotics are. It Oh God! What's what's oh what's the word I'm, word I'm looking for? It it sounds too much like a sales pitch, like a like a trendy word just designed to, just designed to sell their product. That's that's what it sounded like to me. That's probably one of the reasons why why somebody's explanation of what it is went in one ear and out the other. It just sounded too sales pitchy. That doesn't mean you have to take a supplement. You can definitely get it in food, fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi. Myth number 13, an apple a day keeps the doctor. <laughs> if only that were true. An apple a day keeps the medical bill away. That's how I'm reading it as. An apple a day keeps the $500 medical bill for a stub toenail a day. You know, I mean, if only it were that easy. Kind of. I think this myth needs to be 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day keeps the Okay, that's much away. better. And making the choice to have an apple instead of candy is a good choice, and that is certainly going to help support your health. But if the rest of your diet consists of mostly refined processed foods that are devoid in vitamins, minerals, and fiber, then the doctor is still going to be an important person in your life. Myth number 14. Cravings mean you're missing something from your diet. Um... Uh... Or in my case, it's the, um, in my case, at least when it comes to junk food, that means the demons are at my door and I got, or, yeah, the demons are at my door and I got to go feed them. I was, I was, I, the, the more, the more truer phrase would be, got to feed the, mo the monsters are at, or the monsters are at my door and I got to go feed them. But it just didn't, it didn't quite have that ring as much as a uh, demons at my door. Um, now as far as, uh. As far as this, I've had them. I've had craving uh, again back during my uh, back during my weight loss campaign. I had, I mean, I had cravings. I was uh, I was actually craving food. I mean, granted, it wasn't a crash diet. I wasn't a, it wasn't a crash diet that I was on, but I have. I mean, I've had a uh, especially during the period of time when I was trying to intermittent fast, and I'm. I kind of made the mistake of doing this during work. Like I'm, I'm old for seven. Like I've actually tried intermittent fasting during my work shift. Terrible call. The dad, the, the cravings kicked in like crazy. I mean, just walking, just walking around feeling like I've been gut punched. Just, oh, oh, oh. I'm sitting here trying to do my job. I just, oh, oh, oh. And at some point I just, at some point later on my shift, ah, oh, fuck it, I just ran down, uh, bought a don't bought a donut or something, just chowed down, or bought a candy bar, you know, just chowed down. So I've had those kind of cravings. Um, but as far as um, yeah, I I don't have the words for it, so 
there's certainly no science to say that if you crave X food, then you need to have more of Y food in your diet. So cravings can come from a lot of different places, but I've found that that's mostly from not having balanced blood sugar and from emotional, psychological reasons. You know, the clients come in and they're like, I don't eat carbs. I'm really good about not eating carbs. But at night, I eat an entire bag of Hershey Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. That's what, um, that, that was one of the, one of the reasons, that was, um, in fact, I still have it in my cupboard right now, oatmeal, because I love oatmeal, and, um, this, this is kind of an offshoot of this, but I got, I started, uh, eating oatmeal in the hopes that maybe if I'm having oatmeal with pancake syrup, I would stop, it would, um, stop my craving for junk food. Nope. Nope. Still weren't, still went right, right for the junk food afterwards. So, so, yep. Because you need carbs. <laughs> Eat the carbs. So there is a condition where people are deficient in iron. They actually crave oil Ice chips. and clay. <laughs> um, I remember this, uh, there, I think she said, I think she said iron deficiency, but I remember reading out of another book that, um, if any kind of nutritional deficiency, people actually crave ice chips. Like they, they like want, excuse me, they want to chew on ice. They just want, they want to suck on ice or something. That actually can be a nutritional deficiency. But yeah, it did, she kind of said the same thing here too. Pica? <laughs> and so there is something there that exists around cravings for certain flavors. We don't know why people want to eat dirt when they're <laughs> anemic, but that is something that is real. It happens a lot, especially with pregnant women. Myth 15, everyone should cut gluten out of their diet. Um, I'll I'll listen to it, but I know uh, Diamond Dallas Page would probably have a work would pro would love to have a word with these two. He's um he's a big proponent of uh, dairy free, gluten free. He said something like, "All I know is gluten free, dairy free people get out of pain," or something like that. No. If it bothers you, then cut it out. Or if you have celiac disease, then cut it out. Just the regular person walking down the street doesn't necessarily need to cut out gluten. Right, Tamar? Everyone's coming in wanting a gimmick. Yeah, a lot of people cut out... I think the girl on the left just said it, too. Um, Gluten-free might just be another sales pitch, too. It's kind of like what I said earlier about fat-free. Maybe because these food companies, sales are comp dropping because people are demanding gluten-free products so because you know because if these guys are the money hungry greedy bastards that everybody says they are then yeah they don't want they don't want their sales going they don't want their sales drop so they had to introduce a line of gluten-free products so in the hopes of you know trying to get the sales back up so yeah i just i think she the girl on the left made mention of that Gluten-free might just be another sales pitch to get, again, to get the sales back up. A gluten and they feel better, but that's mostly because they cut out gluten-containing foods, which tend to be unhealthy. <laughs> so I think people tend to confuse the benefits of cutting out those highly processed refined carbohydrates with gluten itself. Myth number 16, white potatoes are bad for you. Oh. Um, starch. I think this kind of goes along the same lines as what I've said about oatmeal and what I've said about bread. Oh, and when I, when I mentioned bread, I'm talking whole wheat bread. Yeah, that I, I love eating that. I love whole wheat bread. I'm not a fan of the white stuff. But but anyway. But yeah, I think it, um, I think white potatoes probably goes along the same lines as oatmeal and, and um, whole wheat bread. They're not bad for you, but uh, they're not ideal either. This myth is so sad. <laughs> so many people are missing out on delicious potatoes. The potatoes are actually quite high in potassium and the skins of potatoes contain a decent amount of fiber as well. White potatoes also have a good source of vitamin A. It's good for your eyes. The serving size though is a half cup. I think that's the other problem. You think that the, because the potato is purple or you know it's a sweet potato so it's like more complex and it's better for you like but the serving size really is 
half of a small one or half a cup. Myth 17, activated charcoal is a superfood. What is... I, I caught her right when she said that. What the hell? The hell is uh, activated charcoal? Never heard of that one. It's even a superfood. Like, everyone talks about these superfoods. This is not a real thing. Also, Sup charcoal is not a food. Su superfood? That's another... Uh, that's another trendy word right there. I think that was just thrown in there so so the uh, the food companies can sell some products. It doesn't have a nutritional value. It's not something that we can eat and gain benefits from. It actually passes through our body completely, and if we have it in large amounts, it can be toxic. Myth number 18. No. Nope. Meat is a necessary part. Um, I said I said this at the start of the video, and I'll go ahead and say it here. I just feel it's important. Um, but vegans... And um, vegetarians, they've um, they've been in existence for at least far as far back as the '70s when I was a little kid. I mean, back then I've heard of they're vegetarians, and I I think vegans, although I don't think they were that popular, not as popular as they, as they are today. But back in the '70s, it was vegetarians were everywhere, or maybe not everywhere, but you know, vegetarians were out there eating their vegetables and avoiding meat. Vegans. They're they're only sticking to, I think they're only sticking to plant based stuff, but they were out there, back in the seventies. So and they, it's still going strong to this day, perhaps stronger now that everybody's more aware of it. So, this is definitely a myth right here. Part of a balanced diet. This is a controversial one, and I love this topic. We do get a lot of nutrients from meat. Some of those nutrients we cannot get from plant based foods or it's not as easy to get them from plant-based foods. One of those is B12, so people who have a mostly plant-based diet need to supplement with B12 for the most part. That being said, we can absolutely have a plant-based diet and be incredibly healthy. You can also have a plant-based diet and be unhealthy. <laughs> you probably shouldn't eat meat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You wanna have some plants in there. Those are all like sensible things. And also, if you're 100% vegan, don't turn your nose at me because I'm eating a burger, but everything you eat is from... Yes, yes. God. Okay, this is gonna take, this is gonna take a moment, but yeah, this really hit a, this really hit a chord with me. And I'll bet this is prop and I'll bet this is probably one of the reasons why... Oh, God, it's gonna take a lot for me to explain. This is probably one of the reasons why most, you know... People don't become, you know, people, people don't do the vegan diet. They're not vegetarians. You know, it's probably one of the reasons why, um, you know, why they're not working out. Um, but so on and so forth. It's just, so a lot of these people, they get into this kind of thing just so they can feel superior to other people. You know, they're, you know, they don't view it as a lifestyle. They, you know, it's like they're, it's like they, they pursue a vegan diet just as an excuse to be an asshole to other people. You know, so they can talk down to others who don't have the vegan diet. I'll bet this is probably one of the reasons why I know it I know it was for me. I mean I wouldn't I mean I mean I wasn't a fan of uh, of being a vegetarian either. I mean but when you know when vegetarians sitting here, you know, scoffing at me because I'm because of what she's talking about, I'm eating a hamburger and you know, I'm getting like stink eye from you know, vegetarians at a restaurant. I mean, hell no, I'm not going to be, a, you know, hell no, I'm not getting into the vegetarian diet. Why? So I can be an asshole like you? And I'll bet a lot of people, I'll bet a lot of people, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why a lot of other people aren't into that stuff. Maybe if it was, um, maybe if more people had a, you know, if they came to the conclusion that you are an ambassador for your, your, for your beliefs, you know, you're an ambassador for the vegetarian lifestyle, you know, if people, more people are aware of that, you know, that maybe the reason why, maybe the reason why fewer people don't have the same lifestyle as you is because of you. You know, maybe there'd be more, there'd be more of this. But yeah, she just, she just alluded to that. You know, you know, if you, you know, if you're, if you follow the paleo diet, don't get snooty with me because I don't. That just gives me one more reason to not do it. So, but anyway, enough of that rant.
by Chloe because that's also not really healthy either. Minute 19. But every so if you're 100% vegan, don't turn your nose at me because I'm eating a burger, but everything you eat is from by Chloe because that's also not really healthy either. Minute 19. You shouldn't eat after 6 p.m. Nope. That goes back. It, it goes back to what I said a while ago. Um. I hopefully someday I can find more clarification on this, but uh, I tend to go with um. I tend to go with the second the second opinion. The first opinion was was um you shouldn't you shouldn't eat anything just before you go to bed because apparently your digestion your digestive system shuts down while you're sleeping or something. And then there is opinion B. When you eat when you consume food doesn't matter. All that matters is how much you consume at the end of the day. Like when you when you when you um when you sleep for the day. This is kind of an offshoot of it. It do it doesn't matter. I'm again I'm with opinion B. Remember Oprah in like the nineties had a she lost a bunch of weight and she was like, I don't eat after six and then everybody was like, Don't eat after six. You wanna give your body time to digest. Everything should be metabolized by the time you go to bed so you can have a restful sleep. There's no hard and fast rule that you need to stop eating by six PM. It's individualized. If all else fails, focus on the basics of eating more fruits and vegetables, eating meals throughout the day that are balanced with proteins, carbs, and healthy fats. And if you can start there, that's a good place. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Do your research, make sure you understand, you know, all the facts presented. And then at the end of the day, just do what's right for you. Also ask like professionals. <laughs> Let me put the brakes on. And this is something else that's really pissing me off. I don't... I don't know when this, uh... When this started. But it's like some odd seconds before a video ends. You start getting, uh... You start getting these annotation thumbnail things. It... To me, they're like... To me, they're like fucking ads. You know, so... Um... But, uh, Apparently, that's the, uh... That's the end of the video. So, um... Hope you enjoyed, and, and thanks for watching, and take care, and see you all next time. Um, bye for now. So, hang on, mine's wandering off, so.